Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, uh, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. Um, <clears throat> I'm joined again today by Austin Cherian. So Austin, last time that we spoke, um, we went through the parallel cluster config file and we talked about yep. how most of it, you know, sort of functionally aligns to, you know, maps onto features in the, in the cluster that, you, that, that results from it. More or less, you know, and we looked at it from a point of view of infrastructure as code. You write yep. down your code in the YAML file describing the cluster and then parallel cluster actually goes and turns that into a real cluster for you. Exactly. Uh, when we finished, uh, when we finished that, we were more or less, uh, our next step was really to launch the cluster and that's really what we're going to do today. So that's I right. thought, can we, can we just sort of more or less get straight to it, throw up a screen, sure. launch a cluster, get in the cluster and fiddle around and actually sort of really just you know, connect the dots between what was in the YAML file and what's what's on the out, output. Sure. So uh, what we have over here is a uh, parallel cluster already installed. And maybe I'll just open the YAML file that we looked at in our last session, right? So .yaml. And, uh, you know, as you can see, just a quick walkthrough is we've uh, set up uh, the uh, YAML file to actually have a cluster of uh, a single node multi-node and multi-GPU, basically. Um, what I didn't cover last time was the FSx for Luster, and that's something that I just added over here. And you know, with this, you can have uh, a fully blown uh, Luster file system um, of about one, um, uh, one terabyte uh, that's uh, available for actually, uh, you know, actual usage in terms of high performance uh, throughput uh, applications that require storage uh, at that level. Um, and this is uh, uh, a scratch file system, uh, essentially. And so, again, it's mainly used for applications that need uh, high throughput while doing and reading, reading and writing when they're uh, actually running, essentially. So let's go ahead and actually deploy this. Um, so what I've done is, um, you know, I've already deployed the cluster because it takes uh, about 10 minutes to deploy it. But I'm going to just run through the command that you would use to deploy it, right? So. Yeah. Uh, it's we cluster create cluster, and I'm just going to quickly show the help on this one to give you some of the options that we have uh, around this. So it takes a cluster name, it takes a configuration file, which is a YAML configuration file that we talked about. With parallel cluster three, we've introduced this uh, dry run command, where if you use dry run, it actually validates your YAML file. So that's a key point because parallel cluster two would say, okay, great. Thanks for that config file. I'm going to go and exactly. start building the CloudFormation stack for you. 10 minutes from now, you're going to find out that you made a mistake in that, exactly. in that config file. Um, dry run gives you the ability to just quickly validate the file before you even try to launch anything. So the way you would use it, as I mentioned, P cluster. Um, in the word yeah. cluster. Oh, wow. You're, you may want to start that again. <laughs> and let's do a YAML file, probably the same YAML file that we've been using. And then, uh, you know, uh, cluster 3.yaml and dry run give as true. Uh, and let's see what this does. So it's now actually validating the YAML file. So in a second, it just shows up this, right? So this actually says that uh, our request to create the cluster would have succeeded, as you can see over here. If you had just uh, not set the dry, dry run flag to be, uh, you know, wow. true, essentially, right? And that's and given really some interesting useful. information as well. It's pointing yep. out that you've got a valid, you've got a, an EFA enabled instance, yep. and you're not using EFA. I'm Are not you using crazy? EFA. Um, exactly. And that, you know, there's a good. <laughs> Are you missing yep. something? Uh, and exactly. the other one is uh, uh, warning you that you've got an open port if you're going to use DCV because DCV. you enabled DCV, which is exactly that's a great thing to know. Great. Um, and then now what we can then do is just unset that dry run flag and essentially just go off. And it'll take about 10 minutes to create the cluster for us. Um, and after that, um, you will have uh, the cluster ready. Now, one of the pieces. You said things... 10 minutes, right? That's not 18 months for the grant application, the RFP, and the acceptance exactly. testing? Ah. Uh, you know, the, one of the uh, key, again, one of the key uh, interesting things about Parallel Plus 3 is that uh, now with Parallel Plus 3, it completely um, does this in the background. And so the way you test, uh, the way you check 
the cluster is completed um, in terms of uh, you know creation is just run the list um, clusters uh, command basically, uh, and I'm just right. going to put five to more just because the list is long. In my case, there are many clusters. Wow! <laughs> and so um, as you can see, uh, it'll show you this message saying create completed essentially, and that means that your cluster is now ready to go. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, you can actually log into the cluster. So, you know, uh, to give, uh, to get the IP address of the cluster, right? You can actually run the command, uh, p cluster, uh, describe cluster, um, hyphen, hyphen cluster name and the name of the cluster. Right. And this should give you details of the cluster. And essentially, here you go. This is wow. the IP address of the cluster. So that's the IP address of the head node of the cluster. And so now we can actually take uh, that IP address and log into it, which I've already done. And once you log in, and this is the head node of the cluster that we are on uh, on a second. Just before we do that, can you just can you just go back to that other screen again? Sure. Uh, yeah. The so before so, we leave the screen, Austin, that URL there is actually yep. the URL to the running stack <clears throat> and more to the point yes. to the config file that generated the running stack. So that if you've, if you've got a running cluster and you forgot where you put the config file, you can go get it from the current running cluster itself, grab yep. that config file, you could make changes to it. <clears throat> In fact, we'll show, show people how to do this later, pull that sure. file back, make some changes to it and update the cluster with the new right. you know with the new config because you you know you want to add a queue or something like that the other thing worth just noticing before we leave this screen is all of the results from all these commands you're noticing they're all coming out in json it's yes. all parsable so if you yes. want to write some shell scripts to actually embed cli commands uh in some automation you're doing you want to right. turn clusters on off create them shut them down do any number of things to them you can do all of that and you, yep. you've got very nice clean parsable output uh, coming yeah. back. Um, uh, you, we also have this uh, James path query, which means that you know if you if you want to format your JSON output from the tool itself, you can actually put a James path query uh, on that and then just get the filtered uh, list, for example, right? So you don't have to actually get the entire JSON uh, format and run it through a different tool. Oh. It's actually oh. part of the tool itself, basically. Exactly. Okay, this just exactly. keeps getting easier. <clears throat> yep. This is now this is built for builders. I'm I'm loving this. All yeah. right, so let's let's jump into the cluster and have a play around. So once you've actually got your once you got your cluster built yep. and you can see it in P cluster list clusters, yep. you can then go. How do you actually shell into the cluster? How do you get your shell so, session open to that cluster? It's P cluster SSH, right? Yeah. So you can run P cluster SSH, and, and I can just run the help on that. Um, it's just like uh, providing a cluster name and you can just log in from there essentially right right once you log in um you know you have access to your head node so you know again uh, the idea is if you run uh, to just give a quick check of uh, if it's a head node just run the s info command and you'll actually see the queues uh, that you have on the head node because we're using slurm as a scheduler over here um and uh, you know as we saw in the configuration file, we have three queues, a single node, uh, single CPU queue that's called over here, a multi CPU queue uh, for scaling mm -hmm. your runs out and a multi GPU queue, which could be for a single GPU or a multi GPU, right? Um, right. So, you know, we can uh, now start off a job, right? So I've just written up um, a, you know, hello world uh, MPI program. Um, now, before you do that, I just want to also show you the, um, you know, the, the default stock environment that we have. So we have a module environment available uh, with parallel clusters. So if you give module AV, uh, you'll actually get uh, the different uh, modules that are there already. And you can see uh, from this that we have the Intel MPI uh, already present over here. And to just uh, to load that, you can just give module load. And of Intel. course... MPI. Open MPI is also there, LibFabric, yes. which is with the LibFabric AWS, that's really EFA, uh, exactly. our EFA provider. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, so it becomes very simple for you to just get going as quickly as possible. Of course, you know, using SPAC, you can, you know, uh, make your life more easier. 
uh, by yeah. just using SPAC to install everything. Pull everything else in, right? Just exactly. Give me Gromax, give me OpenFoam, give me lamps. Exactly, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I've been using SPAC for, for quite some time now. It's a really cool tool to actually just get going as quickly as possible. So with that, uh, you know, I've just loaded the Intel MPI uh, library and uh, you know, essentially set up the environment. And now I can uh, write up a, uh, you know, a batch a submission file that looks something like this, where, uh, you know, I can, uh, you know, kind of reserve two nodes. Uh, so this is the batch uh, file that uh, I want to you know, uh, I'm going to use to actually set up a run. Yep. Um, and so we just give s batch and submission file, and there we go. And so you get a job number over there, right? So now if you run sq, uh, you'd see that, you know, that uh, we're actually configuring to those two nodes that we asked for, right? So the, you get the status of CF, which is base, which basically means configuring. This is the, the beauty of Paddle Cluster. Essentially, it's using auto scaling in the background so that you only pay for when that node is actually running, basically. Right. Um, and so, and if you needed for if you needed you know forty eight cores to run this thing, it exactly. would be busy spinning up forty eight cores worth of instances to be able to get you where you needed to be, right? Exactly. Um, exactly. So it's going to go. Yeah. And, it's going to go and spin up an actual quantum of 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 cores that that are required for your job. Let's say that uh, you know uh, I run S info again, and I find that I'm missing a, a specific type of GPU over here, uh, which I want to include. Uh, it's as simple as going back to where Paddle Plus was installed and opening that uh, YAML configuration file, basically. And we're now going to add another GPU instance uh, and then update uh, the, the cluster. And so uh, block of text, change this uh, to 12x large, which is what I want. Essentially, it's the same G4 instance with four GPUs. All right, so now that uh, we have modified the YAML file with the extra EC2 instance that we wanted to use, we can now update the cluster using the pcluster update command. But before that... We have to stop the compute fleet first, right? Before we mess with it. Exactly, yeah. So to do that, I'm going to... Uh, essentially run the p cluster update compute feed to command uh, just to you know run the hyphen h on that just to make sure that I have the syntax right so p cluster update compute feed and then I give hyphen hyphen status uh, and then I request for a stop right and yeah so okay. what this is doing is that a stop is requested um, on the compute fleet once it's stopped now I can go in and update my cluster as well right so that's p cluster yeah. Okay, right, got it. So now that we've uh, set off the uh, uh, essentially the the update on this uh, on the cluster, uh, mm -hmm. when you uh, basically try to do list clusters, you actually see update in progress over here, right, on the cluster, which means that the update is now happening on uh, the cluster. And in a few minutes, uh, you know, this would change to uh, you know update complete. Yep. The update's complete, and now we have, uh, we should basically be having our cluster ready to go. But before that, we have to start our compute fleet, right? So we had actually stopped it. Now we've basically got to start it. Okay. So I'm going yep. to say start requested over here, right? And it should uh, give me this, right? So the aspect to, to, to note over here is that we have done this to our compute fleet. So nothing happens to the head node, essentially, yeah. right? Uh, but if you give S info, uh, you'll see that you know you still have your queues, and most likely, uh, if you just flip back quickly over here, we should see this as running. So this is running. what we wanted to see. So we should actually Cluster see the now change running. now reflected in the description of the queue, right? Exactly. So if you run s info on the head node, you can actually see the new instance added over here. G forty n twelve x large. We've added it yep. in, right? Exactly. So you yeah. could use exactly the same scenario that we just did then. To yep. like, if you wanted to add some fat nodes, if you wanted to add some, say, some, uh, some really high memory nodes, one of the exactly you know, uh, one terabyte R6Is because yep. you've got some bioinformaticians at your place. Yep. Austin, thanks for coming along today and talking to us about this. Uh, I think we've now given everybody a really good, a really good view of uh, the config file, the configuration, and the the you know, as well as then the launch syntax and what it maps to. Absolutely. And just to just finish off, uh, we st we have a parallel cluster workshop as well, uh, which we put up uh, as part of this tech shot. Uh, you can go and uh, essentially use that to play around with some of the things that we've done over here today. Yeah.
Excellent. I'll make sure that we've got the links to the workshop in the show notes. Um, for anybody else out there, if you've got ideas about future things that you'd like to see us discuss in uh, in a future Tech Shorts episode, um, please you know reach out to us uh, on Twitter. Our DMs are open. We're happy to chat. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, Austin, thanks for coming.